I would now like to introduce Jonathan uh, Gossier, uh, the co-founder of MetaLayer, which creates apps that enable users to contextualize the mobile and social web. Uh, many of you will know that uh, John, from 2009 to 2011, served as the director of product, served as direct, director of Swift River at Ushahidi. Uh, Swift River is an open source platform that allows users to filter, structure, and prioritize unstructured data feeds from Twitter, SMS, email, and the web. So in that, uh, that process of the, the feedback loop, collecting information, processing it, and, uh, and uh, responding to it, I think uh, John's going introduce, to introduce us to some creative tools and technologies at the, the second stage. How do we process uh, voluminous uh, data, particularly crowdsourced information? So over to you, John. Thank you very much. Um, John goes here. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk today a bit about um, that step before uh, feed, uh, feeding information back to the public and the step after you've collected it. Um, so how do you deal with uh, excessive data? Uh, but before that, um, I, I wanted to talk a, a bit about um, Apps for Africa, just because I noticed that there seem to be a lot of people in the room that deal with uh, climate change adaptation. Um, this is a project that's um, particularly uh, focused on that. It's going on right now. Love to talk to any of you about, about it later. Um, <clears throat> so MetaLayer, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, squarely positioned around the uh, making the, the lives of data analysts easier uh, and the people that they work with who have to consume information. Uh, we want to uh, uh, make this a, a fairly painless process, dealing with and managing information. Um, at Ushahidi, uh, that was uh, something that I noticed a lot of organizations that we worked with struggled with. It's something that that organization struggled with. Um, what happens when you get all this information? Not necessarily um, uh, at Ushahidi, we were focused on um, validating it. Um, with MetaLayer, we're focused on um, actually allowing people to uh, manage and visualize that information in ways that make it more actionable and understandable. Um, and uh, it's also not about real-time information because a lot of organizations in this space are dealing with historic information, surveys, um, databases of all types of information. We want to make it easy to deal with both types in the same place, um, respectively. So we went from this problem uh, to this problem in this space. And um, <clears throat> open data plays a huge role in that because all you have is more data. It's, um, it's interesting data, and it's useful, and it's, uh, it can really change programs. But the struggle is how do you make sense of it without um, uh, increasing the time it takes to analyze all this information, vet the good from the bad, segment it, and so on. Um, uh, information drives uh, every aspect of what we do in this, this business. And um, as it grows, there's this term that you may hear a lot now called big data. Um, and it just really means a lot of data. Uh, but as that grows, you have storage issues, you have uh, database issues, you have uh, collection and um, uh, information retrieval issues, uh, you have visualization issues. Big data sort of talks about all, all aspects of that problem. Um, so MetaLayer gives access, uh, gives companies access to these tools and makes them easy and affordable. There are solutions out there that um, are both open source and um, expensive, but uh, they usually fall on either side of that line, either affordable or easy to use. We want to hit both. Um, uh, so this is sort of what the typical research project looks like right now. You have like social media, you have um, the experimentation data, the crowdsourcing stuff, that's that little green box at the bottom um, starting to become more um, of this world. Uh, but the traditional amount of information that people are dealing with is, is um, as you mentioned, surveys and um, digging into findings. So what, what happens once you get all that information? Most organizations don't act on it right away. They want to re-analyze uh, um, that data and make sure that the conclusions they've come to are actually accurate. Um, so that's that's a different kind of feedback loop, um, one where the data is increasing upon itself, where you're trying to validate what you have already done. Uh, we want to help um, organizations solve that. Um, so what, can you, what, what does this look like? Um, this is um, a, a visualization by a guy named uh, Ritwick Day. 
Uh, this is not our program, just want to point that out. But I like this because it um, shows you what it would... Um, so using sentiment analysis to look at collected information, how it might look to someone who's doing a project around that. So you would have milestones um, that... Uh, so each of these steps you can think of them as might represent a different project. And the color hue uh, represents how the public feels about each step in this project, uh, or each project. And this might be over the course of a program. And so what you end up with um, is uh, with like a tone map of what this whole program looks like, each step, each milestone along the way, uh, using public data. Now, you could do this with um, collected information uh, from uh, social media channels or SMS. It doesn't matter. It's, it's about what you're doing, how you're visualizing that data, not necessarily how you are um, uh, you, uh, collecting it. Um, so the second step, auto-categorizing information, um, you can sort of think of this as funneling uh, all this unorganized information into buckets. Um, this is another visualization um, uh, that I liked that sort of represents that, that idea. Um, and just dealing with all this, so all this information, and you're looking for that. How do you do that? Um, making that a little bit easier. So th this is our platform. Um, it's a very simple um, drag and drop experience. You would take um, a, a source up in the, the top left hand corner, drag it down, um, fill it, start aggregating information. If it's uh, static information or historic information, you could collect information from your hard drive. Just drop it in there. Um, and then you can start doing things with it. You can apply sentiment analysis, which I just talked about. Uh, you could apply translations. You could apply, um, if you had photo sets, segmenting um, photos um, with faces from photos without faces, and so on. Just making it really easy to, to dive deeper into that data. Um, maps are interesting. There's a lot of people who do great maps. We aren't necessarily interested in doing that well. We just want to help you get your information onto that map more efficiently uh, and with more context, richer context. Um, so um, these are the types of technologies that we deal with. Um, these are technologies that we've seen um, missing from the space, like how do you solve these problems? How do you uh, extract the text from photos that help make them more indexable, searchable? Um, how do you find, um, how do you draw more meaning, more insight from, from this information that you've collected from multiple sources and so on? Um, and uh, this idea of simplexity, taking all this complicated technology, putting a, a very easy to use intuitive interface on top of it and making it easy for people who uh, have lots of data problems. So thank you very much.